What's up karate nerds? Today I'm coming at you live and direct from Sweden where I wanted to give you a private tour of my dojo, a virtual walkthrough so to speak. Because most of my videos are shot when I'm traveling to compete or teach seminars but today I want to show you where I spend most of my days practicing teaching and learning on my own. Check it out. Alright so here's the entrance as you can see. It is a beautiful gate which is supposed to look like a tori, you know that Japanese uh, nice red gate you can see everywhere. And I actually painted this whole staircase and everything myself, which took a while. As we enter, you come to another gate. This right here is made of wood. Let me just leave my flip-flops right there. And in fact, this is a replica of the Shuri Gate in Okinawa. If you look at the details, those are copied exactly like in the birthplace of karate. And so people leave their shoes here as they enter through the gate. And then to our left right here, we have a ring, a reception area where people check in, get some soft drinks. And they can also buy everything we have here in the shop, including some gear right there. Over here we have some focus pads and the boxing ring where they do some Thai boxing as well. Because this is a martial arts center, right? It's not just karate. This is one of my favorite torture tools known as the rumble roller, which is great for your body. And then of course we have some trophies and medals from many years of competing. As we move on we step into the first bigger training area, which is a matted area. This is where we do takedowns and throws and wall techniques because all of this, see, it's mats, right? So it doesn't hurt if you fall. I actually prefer judo mats to train on. Then we enter the traditional dojo. Hey, that's me in the mirror. Hey, guys. Lots of mirrors in here. This is the weapon rack for Kobudo practice, those ancient weapons of karate. Most of the weapons right here we use for training every week. And then some calligraphy right there. This is actually hand painted, finger painted even, by Nakamoto Masahiro Sensei from Okinawa. That says Shingi Tai. Bumbu Kenshi, which basically means that this is a place where you can practice the mind, the body, and the technique in theory and practice. That's Bunbu, right? And Shingi Tai is the mind, body, and technique. And then, of course, we have the Daruma, the famous legendary figure of karate right there. It has been said that no matter where you stand, he can always see you. That's like a legend. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. This is the front, what we call showman in Japanese. This calligraphy right here is from Hokama Sensei in Okinawa. And it's one of the most important ones. It says Nintai Shinnan, which is the principle or the concept of never giving up. Usually people just use this first kanji right there to symbolize the whole concept, which is one of the most important ones. And up there we have another one and essentially this is more advanced but let's say it means that uh, your inner and outer reality are reflections of each other basically so uh, make sure that you surround yourself with positive um, upbringing people okay and then we move on a lot of mirrors as you can see we got some more modern karate competition style mats what many people call tatami, but of course in Japan, these are not tatami, tatami are different. And then we have some kicking shields and focus pads because we do a lot of impact-based training, not just punching and kicking in thin air. Moving outside, oh, I forgot to bow before. All right, here we have a kobudo makiwara. We use our weapons to punish this guy right there. Some more focus pads and stuff. And then we got Bruce Lee up there. I actually created those for free online. There was uh, some kind of software I found where you could print out an image in several small ones and put them together. Pretty cool. Moving on. 
some more calligraphy up there. We got the chill, the lounge area. Some nice work by Sensei Patrick McCarthy. Here, the Matsumura stuff and the Itosu Anko's 10 lessons. Historical, very important documents. This is the changing room for women. It's not super big. Some people forgot their stuff in here. Showers, bathroom. Hey guys, but it's enough. Most people actually come here already in their training clothes, right? So, and then of course, next men's changing room is a bit bigger. Yeah, I made that one as well for the MMA people. Because we have MMA here as well, which my brother is the head coach of. Hello. And then there's the bathroom. This is actually pretty fun. That one, I, I bought this in Okinawa. It says, Speed yori kontrolu, if you want to have that Japanese pronunciation, which means that it's more important to have control than speed when you go to the bathroom. Okay, you guys understand that, right? Don't pee on the floor. And then... Here the showers, let's see. Oh, there's blood on the wall there. Just ignore that. Basically, that's what the changing room looks like. As we move on, we have an office in there. We're not gonna go there right now. We go downstairs because we actually have two floors. Actually, it's three floors because if I go back here, you can see there's an office up there where my mom is right now doing some paperwork as well as the shop behind that wall up there. So, moving on, we go downstairs. This whole place takes about three hours to clean up every morning and it's spotless. I would have no hesitation to eat off of the floor here. This is the first room downstairs which is where people can come on their own time, whenever they want to, to do some strength and conditioning work, or just punch the bags with their friends, that kind of stuff. This is for the MMA people. And that's from my brother's UFC debut. We just put that on the wall. I think his signature's there, maybe. Anyway, that right there, as like the motto of our dojo or our club. And I actually did a blog post explaining how I painted this thing using like a, a projector on the wall and stuff. So check that out on my website many, many, many years ago. Moving on into the bigger dojo downstairs. This is where I do most of my own training because like I said, I prefer practicing on mats, some kicking shields, speed ladders, sound system, makiwara, that traditional striking post from Okinawa, more mirrors, wall mats when you do techniques against the wall, another one, GSP doing some ground and pound, and then of course the deadlifting area and some plyo balls and stuff that we use, and finally another smaller area for training against the wall and then the monkey bar up there and some gymnastics rings which my brother uses more than me and i guess that's it basically a quick virtual private walkthrough of my dojo let me know what you think if you have any questions please leave a comment i hope you liked it bye